Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky from Bags by Becky Mac. In today's tutorial, we have the Emanuela from Shambella Bags Designs. Um, it's a quick sew. Uh, it's a cute little bag. It's got these neat little handles on it. A neat design to do handles. I did this one earlier for my practice bag and um, has a zip pocket in it. But I also put in a slip pocket, which isn't in the pattern. But uh, you can add one of those if you want. I uh, will use waterproof canvas and gold hardware on this one. And it's two-tone. The back is just one piece. If you want, you can do two-tone on both sides. Okay, so that's one. Then I have piping. And I use my piping foot on that. And I want to say, any bag that I make, even though I use a cylinder arm, all these bags can be made on a flatbed. Um, you have to keep a lot of uh, out of your seam allowance, the interfacing and stuff. Uh, for more of the domestic machines but i do this because um i have the cylinder arm and people are interested in it so just a reminder is all these bags don't have to be made on a cylinder arm then i made this one and i had posted this and got a lot of great reviews this one's going to be for my mom for mother's day as i stated and what i did differently on this bag is i crocheted the handles and i used a satin rat tail cord isn't that just stunning? And then inside I used a light pink waterproof canvas. Again, I put a zipper pocket and a slip pocket. Um, and then I crocheted a handle. And I crocheted around the swivel hooks just to add a little bit more, um, I don't know, elegance to it, I guess. I just think it's just so cute. The video is made out of this bag, okay? And I did a different way of doing the um, rivets here because in the way she has you do the pattern it's pretty tricky it can be done apparently but it's pretty tricky so you can follow along that way um, I didn't use any glue uh, or double-sided tape to hold this down I can tell that you should use something to help keep uh, the inner this part here if you had it glued or taped it would hold that in better okay this being for my mom, I didn't do all that, but you can tell when you pick it up, it kind of curves. This one doesn't as much because I did put double-sided tape in here, okay? So it's your choice how to do it. I do describe a lot of things in the pattern. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to see more of my videos, please do. And if you want to purchase this bag or know somebody who might want to, not this one, but this one's for my mom this bag is for sale okay um go to my website at bagsbybeckymac.com thank you and have a great day let's get started okay the pieces you're going to need to make this bag are the um, front panel top okay and then the front panel bottom isn't that pretty oh i can't wait to give this to my mom and then um, on the front panel top, she will have a marking that you will fold this little curve in. Um, and you can just take your time and you can make little bitty snips. Don't go all the way to the line because you've got to fold that. Okay, so make little bitty snips in the curve and then fold it down and then use your um, roller to help get you a, a good edge. Okay. So those, then you need a back exterior panel. You're going to need two lining contrast bands. All right, so I got those. Um, this will be for the handles. You need two of the handles. And then you wanna prepare, put a line down the middle on the back side and put tape because what we're gonna do is fold these in to make the handle. And then you wanna put your mark on here for the magnetic snap on both pieces okay then your strap connector um you need just one because you're going to cut this after you sew it again prepare it with the line down the center and double-sided tape uh, your zipper overlay which i prepared with my double-sided tape and then two lining pieces um, they're going to have darts in them on all these okay so you need two lining pieces, and then I'm going to add a, uh, besides the zipper pocket, I'm going to add a um, slip pocket, and I'm going to have a piece of trim on top of that. 
All right, so there's those pieces there that you need. Okay, and then you're also going to need a piece for piping, if you wanna do piping, and I'm gonna be using my piping foot on there. And then the marks, she does have a video um, in it, but you wanna mark uh, three quarter inch down from there and three quarter inch down from there. Put a center line and I have tape on that and um, I'll show you how to put the piping together. And then here's the cord I'm gonna use, <clears throat> which I get from Amazon on a big old roll and it's five 30 seconds is the thickness of it. And then my piping foot is for that size. Um, piping foot ranges a lot, but you can get it to fit your normal whatever. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of piping foot if you just want to uh, get the same kind because I have this big roll that I got here and I'm just gonna use that and stick with that, okay? You're gonna need a zipper. You're gonna need rivets. If you wanna do a crossbody strap, I'm not making a crossbody strap. What I decided to do is, I'm making this for my mom and I had showed her the other one and she said the handles look like it'd be really rough for her um, arms. So I did some uh, crocheting around the handles with some satin uh, rat tail cord and it's real shiny and I think it's just gonna stand out. And then I also made a handle out of crochet. Look how pretty that stitch is. And so this will be the, not so much crossbody for her, but it's gonna be an extra strap to wear on her shoulders. And so that's what I did is created that. You need your bag tag and you need some D-rings. Okay, and she has all this in the pattern. This is just what I'm going to use to put my bag together, all right? And then the zipper pull, magnet, like I said, and then the rivets. So these are all the pieces. Then you're gonna need some interfacing and I'm using Decaville Light, and she has it in the pattern, whatever you wanna use, but you wanna wait till you put your backing, your back exterior and your top panel and bottom panel exterior together, then you're gonna put this on there, okay? So there's all the pieces. Um, I'm excited because I just think my mom's gonna love this. It's for Mother's Day and it's uh, very springy and summery. So let's get started on this bag. Okay, to get started, like I said, we're going to fold this down. Make sure you have your center marks. Um, I use an ink pen, okay? And you want your center marks. You wanna make sure you have marks she has a lot of marking in here, so you wanna make sure you do that. And then um, after you fold it, you wanna put a little bit of double-sided tape. I'm using 1 8 inch, and just place a little bit on there. And uh, then you make your mark on the outside for the placement. And then, like I said, don't forget your piping marks too. That's where you're gonna start and stop your piping, which you can always go back in the pattern and look. So we're gonna line this up here, okay? Let's keep this stuff out of the way. Alrighty, okay. And then bring this over to the other side and place it at the mark and then gently press down. And then we're gonna go over and we're going to top stitch in the seam allowance. And then what I'll do is just take my steam iron and then just hit that and the, the mark will come right off. Cause like I said, I always like to use <clears throat> these heat pins for me. Um, chalk doesn't seem to work very well for me. I never can get it all the way off on some material. Okay, isn't that cute? Okay, so we use your double-sided tape and now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew that and top stitch it. Okay, I am using white thread, um, Tech 70 Bali Ponded Nylon Thread. I have my narrow foot on. I top stitch at um, stitch, stitch length six, and then my regular sewing is at five. So we're just gonna take this with my narrow foot, and you can do a back stitch if you want. I usually just do one. And then just take your time and go with the curve.
Okay. Cut your threads. Look how pretty that looks. All right. So then the next thing we're going to do is, I'm going to do it off camera, but this is the time that you put your um, uh, interfacing on. So I'm going to take it to the iron, put my interfacing on, and then we'll meet back at the table for the next step. Okay, so I put the interfacing of the Decaville light on both my front and back exteriors, okay? And, you know, it recommends, if you're doing Decaville light, to moisten it a little bit. Make sure you put a protective sheet over it. I usually use another piece of cotton, and then I use a little bit of steam, and that seems to, to help hold it down, and then you want to let it sit. Um, then the next step is you're going to get her pattern piece and it has sew marks on it when you do these darts. And what I've done is I put a little hole at the top and then I lay it down on the pat on the piece of vinyl, take my pin and mark the top of that hole. Oops. Okay. So then just mark the piece. Okay. So then you'll have your little marks on there and then we're going to sew, we're going to fold this down and clip, and then you're going to start your sewing from this needle and then down the seam allowance, okay? And then we're going to do that again, fold where the dot is, and actually you just kind of fold where your dart is, and then, look at that, there we go, and then clip it. And then we're going to start the needle right there on that dot and then sew down at the seam allowance. Okay, and then that's going to make our darts. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, I changed my stitch length to five. And then I'm going to fold this. Hold my threads. Always hold your threads on a cylinder arm. Find that little dot. Okay, and you want to line it up. Kind of square-like, I guess you want to say. Takes me a minute, sorry. All right, we're going to do one stitch, maybe two. And then we're going to back stitch so we have the dart. And then we're going to sew the seam allowance. Back stitch. All right, there's one. Turn your threads. Mm. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Hold your threads. Line it up with the dot that you made. Position that. Okay, hold your threads. Okay, clip our threads. And there's our nice little darts. Okay, oh, that looks so pretty. And then you push it out, see how pretty that looks? Okay, so I'm gonna do the other one and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, I have both of my darts done on both pieces. And this is a good time for you to put your bag tag in. Um, she has a placement. Uh, for it on your panel it would be your front panel. I'm not going to do it I'm just going to put a soft uh, Tag on the inside under my uh, zipper overlay um, I just think that would take away from it. So I just rather put it on the inside. That's what I'm going to do So now we're going to move on to doing the piping. She does have a video link in her pattern and um, uh, You know to follow along how to do it so um, you cut the piece to the pattern size and then I put double-sided tape down the center 
And then this is the cord. I have uh, tape at both ends so it doesn't fray, okay? And then you're just gonna place your piping without stretching it on that center tape. Okay, all the way down to the line there because that's gonna be a kind of our pull off. So that, and then I'm gonna put my piping foot on the machine. So then what I do then is you can clip it, use double-sided tape. And she also does use glue in this pattern on several pieces. Um, that seems to be a thing coming in is this glue. However, I don't have well ventilated areas and I have birds and they can die from the vapors and the smell. So I'm just sticking with double-sided tape, uh, which she still suggests, okay? And you're just gonna push this closed all the way up to that line, okay? And all the way down. And uh, then we're going to connect it to the front panel once we get this done, um, you're gonna take it and you have your piping mark and that's why you wanna bring the piping up. Oops, flip it over this way. You want your outer edge with your edge of your purse, okay? And then we're gonna clip it. So I don't know if you need to watch all that. Um, I mean, you can fast forward if you've already seen this. It does take some time And then what I'd like to do is find the center of my piping and the center of my front panel and then line those two up and then bring it to the sides, okay? So I'm gonna take this, find my center, looks like right about here. Just make a little small mark that will come off. All right. And then find my center here. You can line up the darts. If you don't want to line up the darts, you can line up the whole bag. Everything seems to be matching. Okay, and then just make a small little clip. All right, and then we're gonna take the center of the piping in the center of that and then just start clipping around okay and then once you get up to the side here you want your piping your here's your cord and you want to make sure that that lines up and then this was going to be what we'll pull off and I'll show you that when we get started to sew so I'm going to clip this around and then we'll go to the sewing machine and sew it on Okay, I have my piping foot on. My stitches are still at five because we're just basically basting it on. Now again, you can get this piping foot for this machine and it has several sizes depending on the cord that you use. Again, I'm sticking with the 532nd cord and that's the size that you would order, okay? Um, it's the coolest little thing and you'll need it on for this and then when we put the two pieces together. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece and move it over just kind of so the top of this comes over to the side of that, okay? Then you're going to line it. Again, it takes some finesse. And you're going to put this big part on top of the piping, all right? So you got to make sure you keep your fingers out of the way and... Start it back just a little bit, but line up this big piece onto your piping and set that down, pulling that piece out. I think it needs to be a little longer for my fingers. So if you want to cut your piping a little bit longer, just saying, just for some more room. Take that off of there. Oh, okay. And Get it lined up and then back stitch and then just go slow. And as you can see, the foot is going to hit the top of that piping 
and it's all lined up and it keeps it real close. And just take your time. No hurry with this part. Sorry if my hand's in the way. And then just keep that outer edge along the edge as you go around. Again, you just kind of eyeball it. Okay. And push down as you go around. I'm going to start using this. I don't know if you can see it as it goes around the corner because of the dark. I'll try to push it down a little bit. Let the machine take it around. Okay. Keep it on that outer edge. Watch your clips. You don't run over your clips. See how nice that is? Look at that. I don't know if you can really see it. We'll, we'll, we'll look when we get done. Okay, now we're coming back up to the top here. We want to do the same thing. Look for our mark, and that's where we're going to be pulling this off. But let's do a couple more stitches here. Okay. And then pull that off, and then just continue to sew. Let it run right off. And then back stitch. And 
and done. Trim. Look, look how nice that is with that piping foot. Now, with that cord I use, it is, like I said, Amazon cord. I got to use it up, but it kinks sometimes. Um, and then the foot pushes it down, flattens it. But once you get the bag together, you, you won't see that. But look how nice, look how nice that piping is around there. I really recommend a piping foot. It goes around. You don't struggle with piping as much as we used to. And I do recommend maybe making this just a little bit longer so you have more to pull off. But gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Okay, so now we're going to clip the back exterior to this and sew it around again using the piping foot. Because you want to feel for the piping um, if you're using the foot. And then you just go around. So I'm going to go over, clip it together, and then meet back at the sewing machine. Okay, so I got it all pinned. And this will be kind of the tricky part, but just sew with your piping foot. Hold your threads. And then uh, you're going to line it up with your piping. And basically, you're going to kind of just go right back over your stitches. Okay, so we're going to remove this. And get it to the seam allowance. You want a back stitch. And here we go. Okay, so now we're going to trim off the pie, or the excess here. Okay, don't know if I hit the trash can, but trim off the excess. And cut our threads. And this is the time you can turn the bag. Okay, but you want to check your piping. Good, looks good. Hmm, kind of caught. I don't know what that looks like. Kind of a stitch went right over that. I'm not sure what that is. Huh. A stitch went right there. Um, some of the Decaville is coming off, so I'm gonna press it before I turn it. All right, that one looks good. All right, so we got that all the way around, and now we're going to take it back over the table. I'm going to heat my iron up and press that down a little bit more before I turn it. Um, she does have in the pattern to mark for gluing um, on here, okay? Uh, so pay attention to that. I'm going to use double-sided tape, and I made another bag, and I don't even know if I'm going to actually even glue or work with it. But, you know, do if you want to follow her pattern, it is in there, and she describes it real well. Um, but I'm going to press this back down because I've been moving it around. And uh, then we'll go to our next uh, step. Okay, so I turned the bag inside right or inside out. Look how pretty. Piping turned out really good. And then I took my iron and went in and pressed down some of those edges. Um, again, she has in the pattern about glue and or double-sided tape. I'm not going to do that. Um, and then I went ahead and I finished my pockets. Um, the zipper overlay. And then I'm going to leave the pocket open. And I folded it down because when I sewed it, uh, sometimes I can sew it closed. But what I did is I folded up the edge. And then that makes it a nice, 
when you pull that out and you lay that down, you can crease it. And then I'm going to flip because this bag is not a drop in lining. You have to take it through the lining. You're going to leave about eight inches on either side down here of the um, dart. Okay. And um, I'll show you that, but um, you had to leave that opening and then the bag comes through that, but I don't want to have the sew of the bottom open and leave that seam inside. So I'm going to pull it up through here and I'll show you that too. So I've got both pockets done. The other one, her original pattern does not have a slip pocket, but I did that. Um, I do have other videos and I am going to put one out to show you how to actually do these here. Okay. Sorry for the birds. It's, it's time of day. Um, sun's shining bright today. So, all right. So I got those two done and we're going to set that aside because now we're going to work on the handle and you're going to get both your handle pieces and make sure you have your uh, magnetic snap mark. Okay. And you're going to take the tape off and you're going to meet to in the center and then you're going to go and sew, it says in the pattern, you're going to sew down both sides here and then on the side of the seam, okay? But what's weird about it, it kind of throws you off because you think you're going to fold it like this and you're not. You're actually going to fold on the seam and then that's where your magnetic snap will go. And then you're going to have your stitches here and your stitches here and it'll look really nice. So um, I'm going to go over to the machine and sew both these pieces again, following the directions. Um, sew on both sides and then down around your seam there, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I sewed together, and um, what I did is I sewed the this here on the back side so I could use my narrow foot and I lined it up with that. Okay, so you have both seams on both pieces. Now you're gonna get your handle and like I said, you're gonna fold it this way. So you have your dot. Now on this one, it wasn't too centered, but that's okay, we'll get it centered up. And you're gonna take your handle and you're gonna take it over. Now because I have the crochet, I don't know how close, I'm gonna get as close as I can, but she said to make sure, and again, it's all in the directions. To, you know, use a narrow foot and or a zipper foot so you can get as close to the stitches as you can. And then you're going to clip the bottoms around the handle. Okay, we're going to do that for both of them. Take that one and then fold that around. All righty, I think my mom's going to love this bag. If not, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. And then again, we're going to take my narrow foot and I'm just going to sew real close. I'll take it over there and sew real close to the edge without hitting the thread or the yarn. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll put the magnetic snap on. So let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're going to hold our threads hopefully. And I've got my top stitching at six. And I'm just going to feel for where the foot goes. And I might go this way with it. So it doesn't get caught. And I'm just going to take my time. You can back stitch. And then just go along. Okay, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Oh, sorry, my chair went down. <laughs> I need to get me a new chair. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, if you're going to crochet, I would probably recommend just maybe going a little bit around the corner. Uh, you know, but I think it turned out really good. So we're going to do the other one.
Okay. Maybe I wanted to ruffle that feather a little bit right there. Cut that off. Okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Just mash that a little bit. But I think it looks really, really good. Okay, so now we're going to go and put the magnetic snaps on. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure you take the clips off because all you want to do is go through one layer, all right? So that seems pretty close. I'm using a small magnetic, so I might just move it down a little bit. So what you'll do is I'm going to just put it in the center. That's the center there. I'm going to lower that just a little bit. Put it in the center. It's probably going to be right on the thread. That's what it did before. So um, I would recommend maybe, since these can bend, to go in a little bit. Or make this smaller, get closer to the seam. Okay, but remember, only one. You go through one. So I'm going to pull mine in just on the side of the thread and slice it and just on the side of the thread one layer don't do like i did on the other bag i almost went through the second layer not thinking i'm gonna make a slice okay and the female goes on one and the male goes on the other as of course like i said with these bending in do it that way oh Sorry about that. I guess I should bend them in myself first. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then you want to stabilize it with something if you want. I don't think we really need to due to the fact that there's a lot of leather back there or vinyl. Okay, so push that. I might put just some double-sided tape or some uh, duct tape on the back just so it doesn't rub and of course now with me squeezing them in okay so we've got that and i'm going to reach across sorry and then i think i'll push push them out okay push that one out and push that one out and then just get a little bit of Went to a store the other day and they had a whole bunch of decorative duct tape. And I thought about getting some. But if anybody ever opens up the bag, it'd be kind of fun to see something cute. But all right, so there's the male. Now we're going to do the same thing on the female. And I brought it down just a little bit. So. Again, make your marks on the outside or inside, depending on how close you sewed your seam, okay? But mine ended up being right on that line. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to have to go on the outside. Now I'm going to make my marks, but I'm still going to do it on the inside. One layer. And I'm going to go on the inside right next to the thread. Gently slice. Sorry if you can't see. Okay. And push these in just a little bit. <laughs> Fingers aren't working today. Get one in there. Work them through. Okay, right on the inside of the thread. Put that in there. And you, I'm sure you've all done these a hundred times. And everybody has their own way of doing it. But see what I mean by sewing? Maybe take this thread and sew closer to the edge. I think I did mine at a quarter. Okay, and then a little piece of tape. Just to 
protect it. All right, there they're done. And now they're gonna be a matching set. See how good I lined them up. Not too shabby, looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna go to our next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is once you get your magnets in, then you're gonna take your handle and you're gonna find the center of your lining contrast band and you're gonna find the center and you're gonna clip these on. And then you're also going to get the um, connection uh, strap, okay? And it's one piece and what you do is you sew down both edges and then you're gonna clip it in half and then she has in the pattern a placement and I know it looks kind of funny, I thought it did too, is why are both on the same side? But if you stop to think about it, when you flip it around, then the strap connector, one will be over here and one will be over here. So just to help some of those that, I don't know, aren't getting enough sleep, I was it just seemed very confusing, but we got her. So you're gonna be putting those on here. You're gonna sew at the seam allowance that she has in the pattern, and then sew this on separately, and sew this, and then this, and this. And then we're going to move to the putting the lining together. So I'm going to sew these together and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have this all sewed and um, I want to make sure you're, to let you know, make sure this is right side up and this is right side up. So the seams in the back when you sew that on. And now we're going to find our centers. I already found my center on this. Doesn't matter if you want the male or female, however you want to do it. Just make sure whichever you want your zipper in the back. So if you want your female here or your male, to me, it doesn't make a difference. When the bag's closed, the bag is closed. So we're gonna line that up on both of our lining panels. Oops, sorry. And clip it. And then we're gonna take it over at the sewing machine and sew the seam allowance. Now there's a lot of thicknesses going on through here, so you might need a hump jumper or whatever works for you to get nice stitches. Okay. All right, so we've got that. I'm gonna do my other one. Find the center. those up okay We've got that all in there. And then when we come back, we will lay it down and we will top stitch. Um, I wanna make sure the, yeah, this will go behind here and then we'll top stitch on here, okay? So we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and get that sewed up at the seam allowance. Okay, I have my stitches set at five. Don't forget to hold your threads and then sew it at the seam allowance you can get everything up underneath there and don't forget to back stitch at the beginning at the end
Okay, both pieces are done. Clip your threads. Looks really pretty. Oh, can't wait. Spring is so close to being here. Okay, so now we're going to go take it back over the table and go to our next step. Okay, so now that we have these done, we're going to take that double-sided tape off. If you hadn't put it on, go ahead and put it on and get your D-rings that you're going to use. Slide them on and then you're going to take it and fold it back. Keep your D-ring up out of the way and you're going to fold it to the top of this lining. So I'll just bring it down, kind of work with it. And you just fold it right down inside. Okay, pushing it down and then, okay. And that's what you're gonna do with the other piece. Take the double-sided tape off. Put your D-ring on, keep it up kind of high so you can work with it. Bend this down till it meets. Hope you can see that and meet it and then just kind of push it line it up push it down and then press down your tape and then you're going to go put a rivet we're going to put a rivet through here and you can put backing you know for reinforcement but i'm going to do it off camera because it's so loud but you just take your hole punch find the center and put your rivet in there Okay, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to sew our pleats. And the way I do that is the same way as we did the exterior. Take your pattern piece. She has the sewing lines. I poked a hole at the tip and laid it down, took my pin and I marked that center. And then I'm going to just take and we're gonna clip Clip that and then when we take it to the sewing machine we're going to bring our needle down here and then sew the seam allowance okay and we're going to do that on all four of the sides so again line that up clip it kind of give it a little crease and then put your needle down there and then sew down the seam allowance okay so I'm going to do that to the other one and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine Okay, so my stitch length is gonna be at five. We're gonna hold our threads, fold it where that dot is. Now remember, you've got some weight to your material. So just be careful when you throw it. You're gonna throw it on your machine, so to speak. Okay, that it lays right. and actually got to turn it this way to get it to the seam allowance and then find that dot where's that dot okay all right so much weight <laughs> well, it just has to balance okay and then we're going to back stitch and then sew down the seam allowance. Okay. Right to the other one. Now this one has a slip pocket on it, which normally I added. So you just have to kind of work around that. Hold it, line it up. Now you wanna line up this edge and this edge for your seam allowance, but then you line up the needle on that point and that's what gives you your dart. Let's see, where is that dot at? There it is. Okay, my dot's right there. So my needle is just about there. Square it up with the seam allowance. Bring it down. OK, 
Okay, and keep that on the seam allowance and sew down. Takes a little finesse, but you'll get it. Okay, and then there, now we have the darts. Okay. okay, that one's a little close because of the, you know, slip pocket, but it still works. It'll still be nice inside. All right, I'm going to do the other one, and then we're going to uh, go back to the table, and I believe now it's time to put these together. Okay, so our next step is, of course, to line up all the seams, um, the darts, the center, and connect this, okay? But then a few steps down after we do all this, turn it in, you know, then we're going to top stitch it. Then she wants us to put two rivets here. Well, I made the first bag and I didn't put the rivets in it because I couldn't get, I have big machine. Um, you have to pull the, you know, go in. It, it was really kind of difficult. So making the second bag and looking at it, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my holes. Now there isn't really a measurement in the pattern but because she says it will get in the way of top stitching and what it, what she wants you to do is because see then the handle drops down and you have all this room for top stitching. Well, I have a narrow foot and even if I do rivet this, let's see, see, even if I do rivet this, this handle will still drop down enough for my narrow foot to get in to the top stitching. But what I'm going to do is prepare, put the rivets in, but not lock them down. OK, because then if I find that it gets in the way, I can go back in, pop them out. And then, you know, you're going to need a handheld um, rivet, you know, like the little uh, dial thing or whatever they have, the little metal thing that they put down and you put it in and you can hammer it because I can't see the machine fitting in here. So I'm going to do it this way. And what I'm going to do is get from the center to where I have. And it looks like mine is two, two inches, or if I go on the side. Okay, so we got two inches on this side and a little less than two inches on this side. So we're gonna just kind of split the difference. So and bring it down and then just make your mark. And I'm gonna put it kind of in the center of this piece here and then get my measurement and put it in the center here. All right, so you gotta kinda eyeball it. So that's what I'm gonna do there, let me see. Okay, not too shabby. Mm, excuse me for my reach. And like I said, I'm gonna use my mat because she wants you to go through the lining connector or the lining contrast band. But when I did that other bag, I didn't even put them in, so we made our mark and I'm going to go through all thicknesses. Okay. We're going to give this a shot. I can't guarantee it works. We're going to learn this together. I like when we learn things together. All right. So then we're going to get our rivets. And again, I'm not locking them down. I'm just putting them through. Let me get my little square of foam. And I put a little hole in that. Okay. And then flip it over. And then something else I learned is when I was using my machine, I kept squishing them. Well, I found out if you put the one with the post in the back or in the front, as long as when you put it in your machine, you put that long post on the bottom. It worked for me. It changed a lot of things. I haven't squished one since, knock on wood. All right, so I'm not gonna lock them down. I'm just gonna put them on, okay? And then let me get the hole in this one. I love this tool. Except it rolls all over my table. All right, and then put that in. My fingernail's in the way. Time to trim the nails. Okay. And I can't paint my nails. I always would love to paint them. But 
you know, everybody I see does beautiful videos, you know, and they have their nails all done. I can't with my birds. They will not go on my perch on my finger because they freak out. They don't know what that all is. So I always have to keep my nails plain. But, oh. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> See, that's what's one good reason. Here, gabbing away. Okay, I'll get my phone back on there. Okay, so we did that. And I'm just going to put that on there so then if it does get in the way of the top stitching but see i don't see how because it still drops down because it's a booger um i was watching love lola's and she she, she did a good job but she was you know was struggling it's kind of kind of crazy town but anyway so i've got those in i might lock them down because i have plenty of room to do the top stitching and it falls down enough out of the way um but then again, we're going to try this. So let's just try it this way. Then we'll see. Because, you know, a narrow foot works. Zipper foot. Um, even the regular foot on your machine should work. Um, but I just, I fought so hard with the other one, I just gave up. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing on this one. Get a measurement from the center there or from the center here. Yeah, two inches. Same same thing. So we know that they're centered. All right. So we will go and just kind of eyeball the center here and the center here. Okay. I'm happy with that. And then we're going to poke our hole through it. Poke the hole. And didn't go all the way. Okay, and then get our little foam and poke the holes at the foam. I know my arm's in the way. Sorry. And then we're gonna get two more of these because I kept thinking about this step and how to explain it and. Like I said, you know, she explains it well in her pattern. Um, but if you don't have a handheld, uh, can't think of the piece, the name of the pieces they use. Anvil or, yeah, I think it's an anvil. If you don't have a handheld anvil where you can stick it up in there and hammer it down, I don't know. So we're going to try it this way. But again, I'm not going to lock. Here we go again. I did it. Same thing. I'm not going to uh, lock them down just in case I have to remove them. I don't believe I do. And then I can take my handheld. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll have to get across here. But I have these kits that I got from uh, Amazon. And they have these little... These are for the snaps. But they're same thing, you know, and then you would slide it up in here, place that on the bottom, take this on top of the rivet, and then you'd hammer it down, okay? These are for the snaps. I just grabbed the first one I could get. And it comes with a hammer and comes with uh, directions and everything. It's really a cool little kit. But that's what I would use. The only way I could figure out how to actually get in there and get those done. If you, But if you're stuck with the big machine, we're going to try to see if this works. Then you can do it at this step as we sew the together, okay? If you're not worried about the room you have. Okay, so then the next thing is we're going to clip these together. And you have to. I'm going to go past the dart about an inch, okay? And then back stitch because you need this long opening because the bag's going to come through. Then you start back over here, back stitch, go up and sew. And then... As usual, per her bags, you start at the seam allowance, and then you take it and tuck it in, okay? So I'm going to clip all this around, and then I hope these rivets work, because the other way, like I said, that was crazy town trying to get that big old machine, and I wasn't going to mess with it. I just said, nope. So my other bag does not have rivets in it. I do apologize, but yeah, so... 
All right, so I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. You know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith. I am going to... I looked more into the pattern, and, and I am going to um, use my machine. I had this all clipped, ready to sew. Took a break, and I'm going to take a leap of faith, and I'm going to press these down. You can learn with me, and then we'll know what what it does, if it works or not. So I'm just going to put them in my machine, and I'm going to press these down. And hopefully with a cylinder arm, it won't give me any problems. But again, I'm using a narrow foot too, so I just don't want to fight with these later. Again, you can follow along with her directions. She has wonderful directions of how to do it, all these notes and everything. But if you don't have a handheld one, it's going to be brutal. So let's see what this does. And I, it, it, earlier I told you to put the, the long, the post through the back and see it just, so the post is on the bottom and then the little snap is on top. And I don't seem to have any problems with squishing them, breaking them, you know, leaving lines in them. So, all right, now we'll reclip this. And then I made a mark. I don't know if you can see that, but I made a mark about an inch away and an inch away where we're gonna stop and start and don't forget to back stitch, okay? So then just clip everything at the, you know, center points and line everything up like we normally do. And I'm gonna finish reclipping this again and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Also, um, this is where you, she'll have that pattern piece where you put the glue and tape I'm not going to do that. Follow her directions. Um, I just, I don't feel I want to mess with it. Because again, that's another thing that's kind of hard. But she does describe it very well in the pattern. If you want to do that. I'm choosing not to. And I apologize uh, for not showing you that. But I know that um, I don't want to use glue because of my birds. And I used tape in the other one. And it was just kind of hard to maneuver. Uh, so... I'm not too worried about it. This bag is going to go to my mom and she just will appreciate anything I do. But uh, if you want to follow her directions about the glue and or double-sided tape, please do. Also, uh, Love Lola does explain that. She uses the cement glue. Um, so you can look at her video as well for how she does that. Okay. So now I'm going to again clip and then I'll go to the sewing machine. Okay. My stitch length is still at five. I'm going to start, and remember there's weight, so you want to give it some kind of balance to it so you don't throw off. We're going to hold it like that. Scoot that down. You're going to start at the seam allowance, and then you're going to taper in to the other seam allowance. She has that all in the pattern. Don't forget to backstitch, and don't forget to your stop and starting points. Okay, all done, and um, you could probably trim it down, but don't trim up here. Just trim, you know, your seam allowance um, if you want, but don't go past here either. We'll double check on that. Some people do trim, some people don't, so just double check in the pattern if it says to. Okay, so now we're going to go and see what our next step is. Okay, so now on the exterior, um, she wants you to 
either use the cement, I'm going to use double-sided tape, and I'm going to try to put it in my seams because she wants you to fold them down. So um, I'm just showing you a little bit, but I'm going to have to work with this and you don't need to see all that. But anyways, um, so just put the double-sided tape on your seam and then push them open to lay flat like that. Okay, so once I get that done, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so it's time to put the bag into the lining, making sure if you want your zipper pocket and you, you want your front and your zipper pocket, okay? Nope, wait, backwards, hang on, we're putting it this way, but make sure your zipper pocket is to the back of the back of your purse. And so we're gonna slide this in, easier said than done, as they always are. Carefully not to, okay, you're gonna line up your seams, and then I told, as I said, I am not doing the glue or double-sided tape, but before, after you sew around, in the directions she will have before you turn the bag, because at this point when I'm done, I'll turn it or pull it through and turn it and then top stitch it. But then she says to put that glue and cement, it's all in the instructions, okay? But right now, and then you wanna make sure your handles, again, they would fall easier if, yeah, see, okay, we'll see. We're gonna, I told you, we're taking a, a leap of faith Okay, and then we're gonna pin. You wanna make sure your handles are out of the way. And then clip all the way around using the flat seams. Okay, so this is gonna take me a hot minute. But you just clip around, matching up your center seams and uh, get them all laying flat. Takes a little time to work because you've got, you're fighting against the lining of the bag. Okay, so we'll just put a few clips here. And with this opening, it does help a little bit to kind of pull your bag down inside to help get it lined up. All right, so take your time, clip it around, and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, I took my plate off um, to make sure I have plenty of room to work around. It was a little harder to clip it because the handle didn't lay flat. You get this little bump, but you know, if you just kind of lay your bag down and work with it and it, it lined right up, okay? I don't see the rivets being a problem um, unless, you know, cause the handles just didn't go all the way down. Now, again, we're trying this. I'm using a narrow foot. This is my back, so I'm gonna start back here. Okay, hold your threads. Don't knock everything off your machine. And uh, then you're gonna do it at the seam allowance, which is in the pattern. Back that up a little bit. Okay. And then you can backstitch at this point. It's a balancing act. And then just take your time. Okay, 
I always just sweat this part. Oh. Okay. Just make sure everything caught. Sometimes it wants to slip on me. Okay, not too shabby. And we're gonna clip around the curves here. And then I'm going to pull the bag through and then um, we're gonna turn it inside. So let's go back over to the table. Okay, so I clipped around here and I flipped it over and clipped here. Again, in the pattern, she has the placement now for the glue, um, which would be on this side, this side, on both sides. When you flip it over, then you're gonna reach in and put glue here. I'm, I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, so now we're gonna turn the bag or try to pull the bag through here. Everything takes a little time and it's kind of awkward since I'm trying to keep it on camera. I like drop-in linings. I really do. But this one's not too bad. You get a big opening. Okay, and you just gently push everything through. I'm sorry if I go off camera. And you got to watch your handles because they're coming through as well. And thank goodness you can press waterproof canvas. Okay, we're almost there. Ooh. Might have to give my vinyl a little bit of a steam too. Oh, the handle's stuck. So you gotta make sure, yeah, the handle was stuck in there. Ugh. Wrestling a bear. Okay, we're almost there. Whew. So the only thing I saw with doing the rivets early is just that one area I showed you was um, it bunched up. But other than that, I think we can do that ahead of time. Thank goodness, because I like the style of this bag. Okay, so now we've pulled everything out. Put that out. And again, she'll have that glue in there. Well, then when you start tucking this in, because um, now we're going to tuck it in. And work our lining in. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I think I like to keep it myself. But. And then we just work the lining in and then you're gonna work your seam. Work it down and then like I said, this is where you have the glue and then you would be tape, you know, pushing that down against there. Okay. Now we'll just work this out. The rest of this out here. I'm so sorry if I'm flipping you guys all around here. And then just work your seams. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Oh. Right, let's get the other side. So bright and just oh it's so springy and the handles I just love the handles with it all right so what I'm gonna do then is lay all my seams down I'm gonna clip and then I'm gonna top stitch work all my seams okay but here here's the bag isn't that cute I mean so cute so springy so we'll go over and top stitch it once I get all this uh, laying down, uh, clipped and everything. Okay, so I'll be right back with you. But look how beautiful. And then we'll have our little um, D-rings that I can put this strap with that I also crocheted. Oh, I think it's going to be cute. So, all right, let me get that clipped, laying down, and then we'll go back over the machine and top stitch it. Gorgeous! Okay, I have everything clipped and I had to stick my hand up through a little bit to help get these curves. I'm going to start on the back. Make sure your handles are out of the way. Um, this is might be where the difficult part comes in, but hopefully with my 
table off because I think if you leave your table on that's going to push this up and then it would be hard to get that down is what I'm thinking she's talking about because save the rivets but we are going to see I have a feeling because I'm going oh I'm going to start in the back so we're going to push that handle in push this handle in and just hopefully it stays along the edge we're just going to top coat or top stitch top coat and just keep pushing that down out of the way until you get around there. Hold your threads, stitch length at six. And yeah, see it's kind of pulling up. All right, let's do it this way then. There we go. Okay, yeah, we should be all right. I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm gonna pull my threads through and here we go. We're just going to take our time and keep pushing those handles down because we're not going to be in that area very long. I don't know if that would work with a, a flatbed. You might have to do it the opposite way if you trust your backs, your understitch to be your top stitch. Just keep everything out of the way. Feel everything as you go. Okay, we're getting back around that area again. Let's flatten them down. So it doesn't get caught. that stitch through Okay, let's see how that looks. Leave your threads long. 
top stitching looks good. Yep. Oh, that looks nice. Oh, that looks so pretty. Got some kind of oil on my finger. Look how pretty. The clip marks will eventually come out. Oh, that looks so pretty. Look at that with the handle. Just got to take your time. Okay, now I'm going to tie my threads, bringing them through, tie off my threads, and then I'm going to hook the, uh, oh, then we're going to have to sew this here. And the way I'm going to do that is bring that up through my zipper pocket. So I'm going to open up my zipper pocket. I can do that kind of right now. And then bring, bring that one up, bring the other side up through the zipper pocket. Okay. So I'm not gonna tie my threads off. We'll do that in a minute. Pull that all the way up through there. Remember I had creased it, so that should make it easy to clip and lay flat. And then you'll have a nice little, I'm just gonna clip that there for a minute and get my crease back. Okay. Find the little crease. And then same thing on the other side. Put that there. Find my crease. And that folds under. And then you can match that up and clip it with that clip. them up. Okay. See how nice that looks, how flat that's going to be. Okay, and then we're just going to sew. Might as well while we're here, but I'm going to change my stitch length to a five. Back stitch. A lot of material, a lot of weight, so hang on to it. I don't know if you can see it cameras in the way here. There we go. Just slow that down. Back stitch at the end. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Did that wrong. My bad. Oops. I brought up the zipper pocket. Yeah, no wonder it went nice. Okay, uh, well, people make mistakes. I got a little carried away. So we're going to take that back out. And <laughs> brought the wrong thing up. I thought, wait a minute, something doesn't seem right. I don't have the curves. I'm sure you guys are watching this going, stop, stop, go back. It's an easy fix. We're just going to take this stitches out. Okay. <laughs> I got too excited about this. Darn it. I thought I was almost so perfect. LOL. Okay. So now we're going to reach in and get exactly what I was supposed to get in the first place. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so now we're pulling the inner bag of the lining. And then we're going to clip that together. <laughs> oh dear. Well, shattered the dreams of being so perfect. My bad. Yeah. Not even close. All right. So anyways, we're going to do this. 
fix our mistake. I always have a mistake in one bag. And you know what? I think that's pretty cool, actually. Because if I do it, then it might help somebody else not to do it. Got ahead of myself on that one. Okay, so now we're going to take it to the machine. And then you're going to sew it at the start of where that stitch is and end. And don't forget to uh, back stitch. Okay, and again, the stitch length is at five. So we're just going to stick that right there. Grab our threads. Clip and off we go. <clears throat> Down. There we go. Sorry if you can't see it. I'll try to drop it down, but it's so heavy. There we go. I don't like that little seam on the bottom of the purse. So this is the way I do it. And just go to that stitch. And then back stitch. Now we're done. And you can trim that one down a little bit if you want. Um, now, if you want to trim that a little bit so it sits better at the bottom, you can, which I'm going to do here in a minute. Hopefully I won't cut my seam. I think my mom is just gonna love this bag. Okay, now you can tuck that back in. <laughs> and now we sew the zipper pocket. Oh boy. Okay, so you push that back in and then, you know, clean up your threads off around it. You don't want to leave any of that behind. This takes an extra second, maybe. Okay. Clean your back stitching up. All right, make sure. And then we're going to do the same thing. Clip it, sew across it and then tuck it back in and it will be done. <laughs> All right, and then we just pop that like that. Get your clips. And the seam will lay down on one side or the other. You can't open that seam up, but it will lay down flat. As you saw before, and thank goodness it's waterproof canvas, even cotton won't show the, the missteps, the holes that it leaves behind. I just picture you ladies watching this when I did this the first time going, wait, wait, I thought you're supposed to sew the bottom. Wait, what? Yelling at the camera, yelling at your video or you're watching it going, stop. Well, I'm glad the brain finally kicked in when I was doing this. All right. 
Gotta have some humor. Thought that was too easy, right? <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done this kind of bag. I've been doing some uh, more with drop-ins lately. Kind of got out of the habit of how this is done. Okay, back stitch and cut off your threads. We're going to tuck that in and now we're going to go back over and we can tuck this in and you gotta, I'm going to tie off my threads on the top stitch. You got to take a minute and work those corners in. I forgot about that. Up in the linings, you don't have to do that with. Takes a minute. Get your nail down in that corner. Okay, I got the one. Oh, what is that? Let's get that there. I don't want that. Okay. Now we got her done. Zip it. Clean my lining. Look how pretty that looks inside. Oh, such a pretty bag. There we go. All right, now we're going to go over the table and finish it up. Okay, here she is. Handles and strap. Oh, isn't she a beauty? I just love this spring material. This gorgeous. I think she's going to have a lot of fun with this. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below in the comment box, and I'll be glad to answer anything you have. Um, if you would like to subscribe so you can see more of my videos, I'd appreciate it. And this bag is not for sale, but any of my other bags, um, if you're interested or know somebody who wants a bag, you can go to my website at bagsbybeckymack.com. I thank you and have a great day.